almost everybody that comes to Australia or that wants to come to Australia at some point has taken the IELTS test. Do you want to learn a bit more about this exam? Test structure, question types and much more? Okay, let's do this. Let's get started. Probably by now you know that the IELTS test is divided into two sections. The first one is the block of listening, reading and writing and the speaking test is an interview. We'll talk about the speaking in just a bit. For now, let's look quickly at listening, reading and writing. With the listening section, you will have four sections or four parts and each part has about 10 questions most of the time. For example, here in section one, we have questions one to 10. These ones are usually divided into two parts. Sometimes when you listen to the recording, the recording is split into two parts. So part one will be questions one to four or five and then part two is gonna be the rest questions 6 to 10. One good thing of, about IELTS is that at the very beginning you will listen to a bit of the audio and as you listen to it you will be you will get some feedback or some info I should say on what the topic is going to be about and then you will listen to the full thing or half of it and then the other half which is great news for us test takers. Here you need to be very careful because IELTS is extremely strict with these instructions. It says one word and or a number so only write a word don't write for example very good that's two words only 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 a word we keep going next bit that we have here is a multiple choice question where you can choose two options and basically you need to choose two letters the order doesn't matter and then you just basically need to pick two of these this is not a tricky question always always pick two and this one looks pretty straightforward you will have again a bit of time to, to read it and then you'll be assessed, you listen to the audio and decide. Here we have a bit of a tricky one because here you need to pay close attention. All of these are going to be mentioned and then you need to decide which option goes best with these ones here. So for example, company policy for apprentices. You need to decide which ones are encouraged, sorry, which, one have, which ones have some restrictions and which ones are against the rules. All of this is mentioned, but you need to be very careful. This is probably one of those questions that drops most marks because it is quite challenging. So sometimes students, maybe they get lost at the second one and then people say, you know what, I'm just gonna forget about it. So be careful and don't do that, okay? Don't, don't give up. Next, multiple choice questions, nothing new here. So you just look at them and then basically pick one out of the three or four. Usually you'll have three. Another one here with brackets. So see how this one can become tricky. Now you have six options, I'm oh sorry, seven options, but now you have, instead of seven, you have five answers. Out of the seven, you need to pick five. This is where you need to be extra careful. Then we have another gap fill, and actually, look, without noticing, this is already 31 to 40, and this will probably be the end of the listening section. One last thing to say is, as a teacher, I have noticed that for some reason, most people have trouble in sections three and four. So the first half of the listening test is usually okay, but somehow the second half is quite tricky. And the reason I'm telling you this is because the IELTS test, apparently it's all mixed up. So you have, it's not like you've got increased difficulty, but in practice, it seems as if the sections three and four are a little bit more challenging. So keep that in mind when you're taking the listening test. With reading, usually we have three passages and it's advised to take 20 minutes on each. So here we've got a passage, which is, well, as you can tell, quite long. It's about two pages and you need to choose one word only from the text and then basically fill these ones up here. So that will be a gap fill activity. Then we have the infamous true, false and not given. I'll make a new video only for this because people hate this question. Let me know in the comments if you're an IELTS test taker and you dislike this question so i want to know let me know if this is something that you you agree with or maybe you love this one i don't know so again you need to read this statement and then you need to say if it is true false or not given nice and easy next we have the second passage and as you can see here we've got seven uh, sorry six seven paragraphs and now you need to find the correct information this is an activity called paragraph matching. So you need to pay close attention and basically match this statement with the paragraph where that information is mentioned. And here we have 
two statements that are made and then you need to pick which out of those two are correct nothing too crazy up to this point 20 questions and then question 21 22 same thing now we have another gap fill activity then we have the last one questions 27 to 40 here we have the last text and this one is also quite long we have a matching activity and proof was not given with a gap fill so this is usually what you will see on the text nothing too crazy as you can see IELTS is probably a bit more structured I would say you don't have much flexibility too many different things like in PTE and by the way if you want to learn about PTE academic or if you are curious and you want to know and check out how PTE works just check the link in the description because I've made another video where I describe this other exam then we have writing writing is one hour so for writing this is an academic test in the general training module of the test you basically get to write a letter for a friend or a letter to someone else that will be also a new video but for now what you need to know is that you'll need to describe this graph or this chart and you have 20 minutes to do it and your word limit is about 150 words you could write a bit less or a bit more but try not to go way beyond or just to write way too little and then we have our essay question the also infamous essay question this is the one that makes people panic you have 40 minutes for this and you have usually your question here and you should write about 250 words one quick note is that you don't need to take exactly 20 minutes on this and 40 minutes on this this is just an estimate you could take a bit longer maybe you could take longer on this one maybe it takes you 45 minutes on here and then 15 minutes to do the graph description that's okay this is just a guideline and you're not timed in terms of w how long it takes on each so you could easily you know play around with this in the best way that suits you so just keep that in mind and the speaking section of the test is an interview that goes for about 12 to 15 minutes it is divided into three parts part one two and three very creative i know and on part one you have some let's say more basic get to know you questions so questions that could be not so difficult to answer that you can answer on the spot on your part two you're going to be given a lengthy question something similar to this you'll have some time to organize your ideas you'll have one minute you can also take some notes because you will be given some pen and paper you don't have to take notes or use them but it could help you organize your ideas and after that you'll be asked to answer the question for about one to two minutes if you talk for too long the examiner will stop you and move into part three where you're going to be asked some more complicated questions it's not something crazy it's not rocket science but you're going to be getting questions that are probably going to be a little bit more difficult usually open-ended questions like how can we solve x or anything related to part two or part one and then that's going to be basically the end of the test on part three you're expected to talk for a bit longer because again in these questions you usually have to give your opinion or explain your ideas in a bit more detail an IELTS examiner will conduct the interview usually will be in a room like this one where I'm now and the interview has to be recorded otherwise your test cannot be assessed if you stayed until the end thank you so much for watching if you've got any questions please let me know in the comments anything to do with IELTS preparation you name it I'm here to help. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you would like some extra practice or study together, you can also check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description. And then you get all the options for us to study together and crush that exam. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.